Come with us as we take you into the throne room of God's healing. Welcome to Miracle Arena for All Nation. I'm Prophet Kofi Danzo. And I'm Reverend Joanne Danzo. Today's segment, we are trusting God for you and your house. Amen. Now hear this. The Bible says lack of knowledge, my people perish. The church have to come into the knowledge of God. The Bible says in this end time, I will give my sons and my daughters knowledge of the word. The word of God is so great that anything that God has said will eventually come to pass. Now through this word today, you're going to receive your deliverance. You're going to receive your miracle. And actually what you call obstacles are about to tend to be miracles. Because God is about to change your story and give you a miracle. Now, this scripture is very familiar to us. The Bible says in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7 that the Lord doeth nothing unless he revealed to his servant the prophet. And then the Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 12, he says, if there comes a prophet in your midst, I the Lord reveal myself to them. Together with my wife today, we're going to share with you the role of a prophet. Actually, we're going to share with you the four realms of a prophet or prophecy. Now, I want you to know this. A prophet is not one who is only able to tell you what is going to happen or is able to tell you your past or is able to tell you what God is doing. But a prophet is one who has seen God. A prophet is one who has seen God. He said, if there is a prophet among you, I will show myself to him. That means a prophet sees God. The, the, the thing that makes it unique is because in the olden days, nobody sees God and leave. Anybody who sees God cries out and says, I will die. God said something to Moses and Moses, nobody has ever seen my face and leave. But prophet has grace and I call it the spectacle of honor that God allowed them to see him and to see him in a different way. The church can see God through the word. The church can see God through miracle signs and wonders. But a prophet, God says, I reveal myself to them. And my prayer is that right in this service, right in this session, right in this studio, you are going to receive the understanding of how to see God in his own unique way. Get ready for your miracle. Such a blessing. You know, I was, I was thinking about this in the shower today uh, when the Lord spoke to Moses and he said to Moses, he said, uh, and he said it to Miriam and Aaron. He said, if there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, I make myself known to him. My God. You know, if, if, if I was in the White House and there was a bunch of people and I was invited to the White House and I, was, I knew I was going to see Obama there, but there was a crowd of people. And I said to you, I'm going to Obama and I'm going to make myself known to him. It means that even though there's a lot of people there, I'm going to present myself. I want Obama to recognize me. I'm going to introduce myself to Obama. So God said, of, of, speaking of Moses the prophet, he said, I will make myself known to a prophet. I will, I will present myself. The Bible says he made his acts known unto the children of Israel. But Moses, he let his ways be known. So Moses knew the ways of God. Israel knew the power of God. You know, it's, it's one thing to know God's power, but a completely different thing to know the ways of God. You see, the church miracle arena and people that are watching on TV, they have seen what God can do through you. They've seen your power, but I have seen your ways. Why? Because I live with you. I interact with you. We walk together. We talk together. We have kids together. So even though everybody sees your power, nobody knows your ways like I know your ways. So the Bible says that God let his ways be made known to Moses. So the children of Israel, hallelujah. The children of Israel, they saw the manna. They saw the water turn into blood. They saw the frogs. They saw the waters part. They saw Pharaoh destroyed. And they thought they knew God. They thought they had an understanding of God. But God did not reveal himself to the children of Israel. He revealed himself to his prophet Moses. My God. To the point Moses looked at God in Exodus 33 and he said, God, show me your glory. God said, I'm not going to show you my glory, but I'll show you my goodness. My goodness will pass before you. He did that to his son, the prophet. It's, it's awesome to understand this. Hallelujah. Hear this. 
whenever a man call a prophet a favor before God, God does this. Moses, anytime Moses will go before God, he will not go alone. He will pick somebody with him called Joshua. When a prophet sees the ways of God, the people God has given to him, the prophet, he does not leave them there. He carries them to the place of honor. That's powerful. That is why we need to understand the role of a prophet. A prophet is not just in to tell you that somebody is against you or somebody is fighting you. But the main role of a prophet is to bring the Joshua's of our time, the columns of our time, to the place of glory, to the place of power. And you know, there is something unique about there is something unique about the, the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 15. And God said to Moses, said, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion That's on, right. and I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on. But you see, with Moses, it was not so. With Moses, God was going to show him mercy. Mm. And the reason why God will show Moses mercy is because there was a unique office That's he right. operates in. That's right. And that office required mercy because if you understand the scripture well in the book of Psalm 1 5 it said touch not my anointed and do my harm because see let me tell you this prophet the prophet only do not see G only do not see God sorry he also sees Jesus now hear what God said he said I will hide you behind the rock and that rock, the Bible says the rock is Jesus. So the prophet have access to see God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The church have to come to a place that we see the revealing power of God. And there was something the Lord shared with me. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, a lot of people receive revelations, but they don't get manifestation. And I asked God, what do you, what do you mean? He said, listen. Revelation is given to one person. After the revelation is given to you, then the revelation will cause a manifestation. Manifestation is for all the people. Now that's what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 9 and to 11. It said, it said, it said as many who are being led by the Spirit of God are called the sons of God. Verse 19 says, for the earth waiteth. For the endless manifestations of the sons of God. Hallelujah. The manifestation of miracles are not for visitors. They are for dwellers. And not only for dwellers. They are for the sons of God. And how do you become the son of God? You have to get the word. You have to get the spirit to lead you. Now listen. Most of us are being led by the spirit. But are not directed by the spirit. Let me explain it to you. You can be led by the spirit to go to a place to pray. But in the time of prayer, do you know it's the spirit that must give you the prayer topics on what to say, on how to say it. Because if you, do, if you don't allow the Holy Ghost, you will pray in your mind. You will pray with what you see. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, anybody who leads you, your eyes is fixed on them. And when your eyes are fixed on them, you learn what they do. You do what they do. So the spirit itself, with with endless manifestation and with groaning intercede on our behalf and not only that when the holy spirit comes upon you that is why the holy spirit before it gets in you it has to come on you and when the holy spirit comes on you it comes on your head because that is where the controlling power of men reside it is in the mind and when the holy ghost controls your mind he will control your tongue so there are certain things you go through. And the reason why you say the opposite of what God expects you to say is because you've been led to the place, but you've not been controlled by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's powerful. The power of a prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the church can understand, not just a prophetic declaration, but we need to understand the four dimensions, the four realms of prophecy. The hour has come. The set time for liberation is here. Experience the power of God. Join thousands in worship. Every Tuesday, impartation service at 7 p.m. 
Thursday, financial breakthrough service at 10 a.m. Friday, all-night service at 10 p.m. And Miracle Sunday services. First service at 9 a.m. Second at 11 a.m. And a prophetic healing service at 5 p.m. For more information, call 1-800-807-7617 or visit MiracleArena.ca. Miracle Arena for all nations. Revolutionizing the world for Jesus. The Lord showed me there are four uh, different levels to the prophetic. Tell me. Number one, there's the, the prophet. Number two, there's the spirit of prophecy. Then there is the gift of prophecy. And then there's prophecy of the scriptures. But what we're talking about today is the prophet himself. That's right. Who is a prophet? You know, the prophet is probably the most misunderstood of all the fivefold ministry gifts. Uh, uh, people believe that today, we believe that there are still pastors. We believe that there are still teachers. We, we believe in the work of the evangelist. Mm -hmm. We even agree with the apostles. But when the word prophet is mentioned, there seems to be a negative connotation that comes with it. And people think, well, prophecy is no longer needed today. Um, or, you know, uh, prophecy, most prophets are false, those kinds of things, you understand. But one thing I always used to argue the scripture is, is that the God we serve is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God that used the evangelist back then uses the evangelist today. The same God that used the apostles back then uses apostles today. And the very same God that used prophets back then used prophets today. And prophets in the scripture were very, very important. That's right. You know, the Bible says, as you said, God does nothing unless he reveals himself first to his servant, the prophet. He said in Genesis chapter 17, which I love so much, I love that scripture, he said, should I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? That means that God is sitting in heaven wondering how, how he, he's thinking, the way that I love my prophet Abraham, the way that I love my son Abraham, I'm planning something on earth, but I can't hide it from the one that I love. Do you know that there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets? That's what Daniel said. Right. He said, there's a God in heaven that reveals secrets. secrets. And we need to begin to pray the prayers that the prophets pray and say, Father, reveal those secrets to me. I want to know deep and secret things. Do you know that the Bible says in Ezra 6, 14, it said that Israel profited through the prophesying of the prophets. So that means that through prophecy, we prosper. Prosperity through prophecy. And I'm not just talking about the money and the house and the car type of prophecy. I mean that a prophecy can cause you to prosper in your whole entire life. I prove you in the New Testament, in John chapter 4, a woman sitting at a well, and she comes and she meets with the true prophet, the first prophet, the mightiest prophet of all. And he sits with her at a well, and he begins to prophesy into her life. And he begins to prophesy into her destiny. And he shakes her, and she turns and she says, Sir, I believe that you are a prophet prophet in the New Testament and that prophecy that Christ gave to that woman at a well started a revival praise the Lord in that town of Samaria and she went out and began to tell people she said come and meet a man who told me all the things I've ever done that's powerful so prophecy will win a nation my God prophecy will win generations my God that prophetic word that Christ gave to her changed the whole town changed of Samaria. Everything. It changed her destiny. She had been with, with, with five different men. She's living with the sixth. And then she meets the seven, the perfect number, the number of completion. That means all other men have paled in comparison to the true prophetic word of Christ. It is the word of the prophet that will change your destiny. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you will realize where he says that he that prophesies mm -hmm. edifies the church. That's right. See, prophecy edifies the church. Believe in the Lord, you will be established. Believe in his prophet, you will prosper. Your prosperity is connected to one divine word out of a mouth of a prophet. And I want to tell you something. A genuine prophet will not charge you for a divine word. That's right. Because the Bible says, freely you receive, freely shall you give. So a genuine prophet, listen, when prophet begins to charge, they become soothsayers. 
they become palm readers and that is fake you don't prostitute the gift of god in you because it's given for the edification of the church yeah. here it is prophecy can pick one person from from zero and make the person hero Miracle Arena is taking the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to the nations of the world through your generous support. The gospel is free, but the logistics are costly. We are therefore asking that you consider becoming a monthly partner or plant a one-time seed to spread the good news to the nations of the world. Should you choose to do so, you will be placed on our miracle prayer list and you will receive a personal prophecy from Prophet Kofi Donso. Please call 1-800-807-7617 or visit MiracleArena.ca and make a donation now. Where is your bag? Have you heard the name Lucy? Who is that? My twin sister. Your twin sister and Lucelle. You are Lucille. Next, come. Lift up your hands. I'm standing with you right now in front of a certain property. And the property I'm looking at is a very big property, but I see a battle on the property. When I saw that battle on the property, I saw it's a property. I don't know what it has to do with your mother. But I saw a property that has something to do with your mother. And I saw that your mother in a property, I saw your mother calling the names I mentioned to you. But also, if you don't know, go and ask. You, you may have a brother, if you don't know, Thomas. Yeah. You know him? Yeah. Hey. 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 So come. Somebody shout, Professor! Professor! I'm doing my thing I like doing best. Can I tell you something? Sit down. Can I tell you something? One of the things I want to tell you is that there is a property, but the property, there is a battle. That property, because even as I'm standing here, I saw your mother, but I saw your mother was not among the living. I saw your mother buried. Where is your mother? She's dead. She's dead. Yeah. What is going on in the family? Um, what happened? Um, after she passed away, she left the property for my brother Thomas and my twin sister, the three of us. She said because we are the last ones, because we are sixteen children, and because and because we are the three last ones, she left the property for the three of us. Now my sister and I, we live up here, and we said we don't want it, so we left it for my brother. And my other siblings are fighting with my brother. Let me tell you something. If you've not known and heard, mm -hmm. your brother is developing evil cancer. That cancer is at the left side of his lungs and is going to die by July 13th, 2015 at 9.45 a.m. Three seconds. He's been complaining of pain. It's a cancer. But if I be a prophet of God. Hey, Brad! The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9 says that, And he gave gift to them. Some were teachers, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and prophets. All these gifts are given for the edification of the church. I want you to understand. That in our lives, we need a prophet, we need a teacher, we need a bishop, we need an apostle. We need all this five-hold ministry. And there is one of them that God has given the grace, such as an apostle, can touch all the five areas. A bishop can touch all the five areas. And a prophet can touch all the five areas. It's very needed in our churches, needed in our homes, that we have to get prophets to lead us to the place where God is taking us prophet are very vital keys that god has given to the church they are just like keys that open doors big doors small doors everlasting doors and some of us we are the back of doors knocking asking how can we enter into that breakthrough you might have received a prophetic word god have spoken something about you and all that has been spoken about you 
must come to pass but how do you receive it now we're going to receive the four keys or the four dimension or the four realms of prophecy the four realms of prophecy now time is not on our side unfortunately so we can't get too deep in it but as i said before the four realms of prophecy include uh the prophet mm -hmm. the spirit of prophecy the gift of prophecy and then prophecy in the scriptures you know there's a difference between a prophet and somebody that has the gift of prophecy tell me you know somebody with the gift of prophecy um, in order to prophesy um, they they become stirred up it falls upon you in a service it falls upon you while you're preaching while you're ministering you get stirred up and then you begin to prophesy but the office of the prophet is very different from somebody with the, the spirit of both hear from God both are led by the Spirit of God but the the office of the prophet is different because the prophets of old and the prophets in the scripture um, they were how do if I can say it they are constantly in tune with the voice of God correct me if I'm wrong that's as right. a prophet that's right. you don't need to be stirred up to prophesy that's right. it's you're always on you're always in tune with God um, and and prophets were, were, were different they were uh, peculiar individuals you know the prophets of old they only came out to prophesy you wouldn't see them any other time their days were consumed in the presence of God their days were consumed in hearing what thus saith the Lord. They would spend time, hear from God, come out, pronounce judgment, rebuke, correction, exhortation. Um, they would give a word and then they would go back into their caves and be in the presence of God. And they, they were loners. They did strange things. They would eat locusts and wild honey. They, you know, they were, they were hardly regarded until it was too late. They were hardly respected until it was too late. If you don't believe me, ask Jesus, the true prophet of all, hardly regarded, hardly respected. But do you know one of the, before we close, I wanna say one of the most important purposes of a prophet is to tell somebody what they are called to do. To pick somebody out of a pit and tell them, thus saith the Lord, where you are is not where you're called to be. If you don't believe me, ask Samuel. You have a man by the name of Saul who, who who had no idea that he was called to be a king. He's chasing donkeys his whole life. Am I correct? Prove me wrong. He's chasing donkeys his whole life, and he goes to Samuel the prophet, not looking for a destiny, but looking for a donkey. And Samuel says, you are not called to chase donkeys, you are called with a destiny. And he said, let me take this donkey chaser and turn the donkey chaser into a king. That's the role of the prophet, to come and tell you where you are is not where you are called to be. Let me show you what God is calling you to do. If you don't believe me, talk to somebody by the name of David, who's at the backside of the desert tending to his father's sheep and in comes the prophet Samuel and he comes to David and he says David baby you are not called to tend to sheep you are called to be a king and your children's children will be royalty too Hallelujah. that's the prophet's job that's the right. prophet will pull you up and say you know Ezra chapter 5 the Bible says that the the building of the temple ceased until the prophet Haggai came and said come on people let's rebuild let me provide you with that leadership let me remind you of what you are called to do Moses the prophet would come to Israel and say Israel you are not called to be in bondage come let me show you what God can do for your life here is a man by the name of Elisha and he is just he's he's doing what everybody knows how to do what I've always done my whole life I'm working I'm tending to my ox and a prophet by the name of Elijah comes and taps Elisha on the shoulder and says come on follow me there's a double anointing that you know nothing about ladies Praise and gentlemen God. and if you are looking for your destiny you are looking for your calling you want to know what is God calling you to do you can pray to God you can ask God and I'll believe with you that God will speak but there's also a prophet that can speak and tell you you, thus saith the Lord you're not called to chase donkeys you're not called to tend to sheep you're not called to feed oxen uh, Amos said in Amos chapter 7 he said I was I was just a herder of sheep and God pulled me out and said go prophesy to my people I'm telling I'm telling you my own testimony I did not know what I was called to do me until I met a prophet praise God hallelujah you know I'm so thrilled. I'm so I'm, I'm so thrilled, and I'm, it's, it's amazing to hear such wonderful words um, of teaching. Now let me tell you this: anytime people call on God.
from the book of Exodus. And the Bible said, when God heard the cry of Israel, he caused Moses to go and train himself as a prophet and to deliver them. When the people of the Midian had came against Israel, he raised one among them called Gideon to show them the way they should go. I have a last word for you. Anytime you meet a prophet, prophets are sent to meet those who are sent away so that he will send them back as supernatural people. I want you to know, and probably I'm speaking to somebody that marriage have sent you away, finances have sent you away, the economy have sent you away, and you're frustrated from the school, you don't know what to do, there is a prophetic word for you. I want you to look at the number right now. Give us a call. There is a word that God is bringing to you right now. I see that God is about to transform somebody. There is somebody who is watching. Is it Veronica? Veronica is your name. The Lord is speaking to me concerning you. And the Lord is saying to me, almost about three weeks now, you've had this problem. You are going, you are, you are undergoing some operation surgery, but God is going to touch you right now. And the healing that you have been praying for is being released to you. There is a young, there is a young, young guy Samuel, 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 thank you, Holy Ghost. Samuel, you have a brother. You have a brother. And the Lord is speaking to me that your brother is having problems speaking and hearing. You've been praying. You guys have been concerned. You've been from one miracle program to another miracle convention. Today, for you to know that God is speaking to you. When you pray last night, asking for God to touch him, God said he heard it. And right now, as is it, is it something to do with violin, violin, violin or something? Violin. The Spirit of God is touching that person right now. Receive the miracle that you've been asking God for. This is your time. It's your season. And I want you to know, by the time you turn from this broadcast, you will turn as another person. God bless you. We want to thank all of you for spending time with us in your home. We are so happy and proud for you hosting us in your home. We brought church life to your house. We want you to know that God is up to something in your life. Give us a call right now. We want to stand together with my wife, pray for you, trust God for you, and believe God for your life. And today is a day of a new joy, new miracle. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad. God bless you.